Hello. Welcome to Online Worship with White Bear Lake United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Christine Ford, and along with Pastor Bill Eves, we want to welcome you into this virtual space together. It is the vision of our church to provide nourishment for the hungers of life. And we trust that no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, no matter where we are watching this geographically, we are all connected in our congregation and in our wider community. And between us, God is moving and working and living and breathing. And this allows us to become light and salt and to go out from this space or any space of worship and go into the wider world and to nourish the hungers that we find around us. So it is in that spirit that we come together for worship today.
A reading from Matthew 5, 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be faithful to your holy story, O God, my rock and my salvation. Amen. The theme of our sermon series has been retuning our hearts. Let's talk a little bit about tuning or being out of tune. It's a very approachable metaphor for a lot of people because there's a lot of things that have to run in tune. You tune up a car, but most commonly, you tune up an instrument. Now, I played double reeds in high school, so I'm a bit of an expert at playing out of tune. <laughs> there are things that can take us out of tune just a little bit. And there are things that very quickly take us out of tune a whole lot. It might be the case that your reed gets a little dry. Or if you're playing piano and you stop for a while, your fingers get a little stiff. Could be that your throat gets a bit parched when you're singing. And then there are things that take us out of tune very big time and very quickly. You break your reed. You get a bloody nose while you're singing or some string snaps somehow or your peg comes loose those things will take you out of tune in big and obvious ways you know what makes them even bigger or more obvious though is when someone who is in tune stands right next to you and you can hear the melody that they are playing or their car is running much more quietly in the lane next to yours. It's jarring and startling and can provoke a response in us for anything from some mild laughter, like, oh gosh, I didn't realize I was that far out of tune, or shock and embarrassment and can be taken aback in ways that really shake up our minds and our hearts and our worldview. I wanna talk about two things, two sayings, two notions that have come into my life in the last 10 years or so that were that in tune person standing next to me. The times when I went, oh, oh my. And I wonder if they might be relatable to a few other people too. Sometimes it can feel like in church, there are certain themes that just come up over and over and over again. And we can burn out a little bit on them. And it's okay that we get tired of talking about them. But the reason that we return to them is that they are so fundamental and central to the message of Christianity things at the very core of Jesus' teaching and the God that we encounter in our Gospels, that we can play them, play that melody over and over and over again in church. And it'll never go out of style. It can get a bit out of tune. And sometimes when you think you've heard something ad nauseum, and then someone comes and plays the same tune a little bit clearer right next to you. That's a bit of a wake up call. Today is another one of those ad nauseum themes. Retuning our hearts 
to love our enemies. I have to admit that as I sat down to write this sermon, I realized that many of the things that I felt important to say, I've said before, many times, in many spaces, to many different configurations of congregants and of friends broadly. So I thought that I would tell you about the times that my own heart was retuned when it comes to loving my enemies. Something that is difficult for every human being to do, whether they are the pastor or anyone in the pew. I heard once, a few years ago, someone posed the question, what would you do if you were given a box with a little bit of God inside of it? What would you do to protect that box and care for it? What lengths would you go to to keep it safe? And how would you treasure it? And I thought about that. And as I was thinking, that person said, that box is you. Well, that was an awful lot for eight o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And the truth is that that box is you too. Every human being is a vessel with a little bit of God inside of it. How differently would we see ourselves? And we can be our own worst enemies very frequently. And how differently would we see our enemies? How differently would we see people, even though those people want to cause us difficulty or pain? Which is, I think, what an enemy is fundamentally. Someone who does not value our existence, someone who does not value our life, who may or may not be actively seeking to make it more difficult and pulls us out of right relationship. How would you see that person if you saw them as a box with a little bit of God inside? There are boxes of God in every single place and space on this globe in people far and wide of every walk of life. Yes, even that politician or that journalist, that relative-in-law or those neighbors with the wrong signs in their yard, you know, the ones, we all have them. They are all boxes with God too. Hearing that really showed me how out of tune my own heart had gotten in the quagmire of abhorrent and even violent political rhetoric that has been circulating for honestly ever, but that I've been particularly aware of for the past 10 years or so. It was a wake up call and made me realize how much I needed to think of other people differently. And I would venture that my experience is not uncommon. In fact, I've heard many, many people tell me in many, many settings that they too struggle to see their enemies as anything human anymore. And not seeing them as human detracts from our own humanity. I wouldn't wish that for any of us. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't think God wants that for us either. The other time that someone stood next to me and played in tune was re recalling a quote from activist Dorothy Day when she said, 
I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. That was an exercise in humility. I think we can all picture that one person who, for whatever reason, is the most difficult in our lives. Could be somebody that you know, it could be someone on the world stage. It could be someone who affects your life in large or small ways. But I invite you to take a moment to picture that person and to consider that that's how much we love God. As much as the person that we love the least. And if that image is making you uncomfortable, that's not uncommon. And I invite you to sit with that feeling and to think about it over the coming days. Am I telling you that we're suddenly going to start loving this person and just embracing them and wanting them to be in our lives? No, not necessarily. And I would certainly never encourage you to put yourself in toxic, harmful, or dangerous situations. But I would say that it's okay to stop and think about, do we want ill for them? Do we want bad things for them? Or do we want them just to be powerless in our own lives? Do we think of them as human still? Or something less than? Jesus' two great commandments were to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength. And then to love others. And that is some of the hardest work of Christianity. Seeing the humanity, and the lovability in our enemies. But when we can, we'll see a world of peace and of coexistence. And that'll be a better thing for us. When all the boxes of God can be respected and live in harmony. May it be so. Amen.
Will you pray with me? Oh God, you long for us to be people of love who live together in peaceful community with each other, sharing the good things of life, helping each other to overcome the hard things, celebrating the joyful goodness of your creation. But we all know so much about the controlling force of hate in our lives, hate that sometimes disguises itself as fear or indifference, or cold-heartedness, or busyness, or snobbery, or even as righteous indignation. We know that there are people we would prefer to be permanently separated and protected from rather than reconciled with. We know that there are nations that wish us harm and destruction. We hope that punishing and destroying our enemies will at last make us safe make us free, make us whole, and yet it never works. So we ask for help in our actions and attitudes to work out this controlling force of love in our lives, this power that can solve problems and heal wounds. We pray for our enemies, those who wish us evil, those who are continually deriding and persecuting lying and deceiving, judging and condemning. We ask for forgiveness for them, even those we think are evil and irredeemable. Give them your grace and teach us how to give grace as you have offered it to us. Bring goodness and love to them and deliver them from hatred and cruelty and revenge. Bless us and them with understanding and truth. We ask this, trusting in your power to restore and make new. And we pray together in the spirit of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We would love to get to know you and to be in touch with you. Leave us a comment below, introduce yourself, and tell us something interesting about you. We'll answer with something interesting about us. You can find us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Same handle everywhere, at WBLUMC. And you can find our website, WBLUMC.org, with all of our contact info and calendars, ways to be involved, and more about the missions and goings on of our church. And now, as we go out into the world this week, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit go with you and everyone, always. Amen.